Hello everyone. In this video, I interview an actual doctor who like went to school and everything. And he tells me a lot about dunking. This video is a bit more informative. Not that my other videos haven't been informative. Wiki Howe literally told me if I eat an egg a day, I will get taller. The more further you get back, I guess the more force you can have. But this one just goes a little bit more in depth. So feel free to hop around. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna do a recap. So hopefully that's helpful. Anyways, here's my interview with Dr. Mike Pavlak. Okay, welcome everybody. I'm here with Dr. Mike in his home. Um, <laughs> why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. My name is uh, Dr. Mike Pavlak. I am a physio or a physical therapist. Uh, I own and work at a clinic down in Fairlawn called Physio Orthopedics Performance. Uh, we are a runner specialty clinic. Uh, I'm also a senior lecturer at the University of Akron. This is Psychic, and she's joining us today. She's only going to be slightly she's doing in the way. Really good. So my first question: When I think about jumping, I think, you know, quads, hamstrings, glutes, calves, right? Mm -hmm. What else is is included there, and what are some good exercises that target those? In terms of like timing of like, yeah, that's... activation goes okay. first thing to fire. Are going to be glutes into hamstrings. Uh, that's going to extend the hips. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to see the quads, which is going to extend the knees. Uh, and then you are going to have that final push off that's actually going to come from the calves. Okay. Um, and then that would probably be the best way to break down the exercises as well. Um, if you're thinking about trying to hit glutes, hamstrings, you're probably hanging out with like a, um, just a traditional deadlift would be great. Mm -hmm. Or something like a barbell thruster. Mm -hmm. or, barbell thruster. Nope. Time not a barbell is... thruster. <laughs> thruster. That's an upper extremity movement. That's a pressing movement. Okay. I'll forget about <laughs> barbell it. Barbell hip thruster. Okay. Uh, and that's maybe you've seen the, it's probably the most awkward movement pattern you can do in the gym. And then if you move down to like quads, you can think in the very traditional realm of uh, squats. Um, yeah, barbell squat. Yeah. We do find front squat to be a little bit more quad dominant than back squat. So okay. if you got up in that like front rack position, you yeah. can hit a little bit more quad related movements. Okay. A step up would be a great movement pattern there yeah. as well, some sort of weighted single leg step up, especially mm -hmm. anything that's going to mimic jumping more. So if you are a guy who's going to push off of one leg to get their highest extension, then mm -hmm. most of those movement patterns you want to do should be single leg focused. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then lastly, if you're thinking about calves, it's probably, again, a very traditional calf raise uh, would be good. And, you know, running is actually a pretty good movement pattern as well as it relates probably more into the sprint movements. But because, again, now it's single leg push off of that calf. Okay. Not a bad movement pattern at all. I've got a question about running later, so we'll put a pin in that and come back to gotcha. it. But yeah, okay, that's great. I'm doing most of those movements, some sort of squat, some sort of step up, deadlifts, starting to get back into it. First time I did deadlifts, I tweaked my back and it hurt for like five or six days. So I'm okay. just doing like dumbbell, you know, deadlifts, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so my knees are very loud and I will demonstrate that for you. But I'm on a slant board, so I do, I do some squats on a slant board because apparently, and you tell me if I'm wrong or right, when your heels are elevated, kind of targets that VMO a little bit more. Yeah, 100%. And Slant that's... board squat, we really like to load the quads more so. And um, if you've ever heard of Spanish squat, that's also a really solid movement pattern too. So listen to my knees here. Yep. So they're gonna pop probably. There's one, oh. they usually both pop. Now listen on the way up. Okay, so two questions, <laughs> this is a two-parter. Two-parter. One, what's wrong with me? And two, how much longer do I have? Yeah, it's terminal. Okay, yeah. jeez. How terminal is the question though, right? That's, that's a question now <laughs> that I have. Completely. There are three reasons to hear noises when you're, like in your knees. Uh, and it's not uncommon for pretty much everyone okay. to have some sort of noise. Um, and more often than not, if it's noise in the absence of pain, you really have minimal to nothing to be worried about. So the first one you heard, which was the biggest pop when you went down, it's actually called a cavitation. Uh, and cavitation is the all, all joints, so including like knuckles and how you can crack those. Exactly, just like that. Wow, you are a musician. I can just keep going all day. Yeah, you are. And like... these are probably ready to pop again. Yep, there's one. There's two. <laughs> so sorry. Go ahead. Um, joints are surrounded by joint capsules. Okay. Joint capsules create a little bit of what's called like a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And when that vacuum is pushed so far that it causes the capsule, the vacuum bursts and it creates a. Uh, it's a release of nitric acid or nitric oxide gas, uh, which is what that popping noise is. An it's explosion. actually <laughs> yes, an explosion of okay. of nitric oxide gas. Um, and what that does is the capsule actually expands and it increases the joint space for a little bit. Yeah. So that's why if you've ever been to a chiropractor and gotten joint manipulation, you might 
get that joint manipulation and then notice that you have a little bit more range of motion to move in. So a lot of times what the term you'd use there is actually use it or lose it, right? So you cause oh, yeah. this joint capsule cavitation to occur and you increase your joint range of motion so you can move further. So that's what that popping is. Okay. The other ones that are sound like more rhythmic. Like where on the way like, up? Yeah, on the way up. The ones that you can redo every couple of seconds. So any cavitation that occurs and is truly just a cavitation, it's going to take about 20 minutes for that joint capsule to close back down and you'll be able to crack it again. For my knuckles, that's true. For my knees, it's about... 30 seconds. Okay. That might not be cavitation then. That could potentially just be ligaments or tendons. <laughs> I, did, I didn't want to go. Yeah. <laughs> ligaments or tendons. Um, they'll slide over bony prominences and they'll okay. make a little bit of a twang or a little bit of a cracking sound. Okay. Uh, and that is again not something to be totally worried about because most of the time blocking that bony prominence is something called a bursa or a fat pad. Uh, and that's going to protect the tendon or ligament wrapping over top of it from causing any sort of damage or whatnot. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm fine. It's You're actually fine. a good thing. It's it's like a normal you, thing. So it's good. It's normal. Normal. <laughs> Normal's good. There you go. Normal's good. <laughs> normal is good. You're writing down. I am normal. I, I am, am good. I am normal. Normal is good. Equals I am. Ryan normal. is good. Uh, Ryan is good. Yeah. Okay. Now technically, there's a third option. Okay. Third option is not always good. That would be, um, you could refer to it as like degenerative changes, or you could refer to it as intraarticular changes, mm -hmm. and that's when you actually see joint space changing. That occurs um, with anyone over the age of 25, we start seeing joint space change. When it becomes a great enough change uh, at the bony prominences, we'll start referring to it as arthritic changes, or arthritis as people will more commonly refer to. Okay. Um, but a lot of times, like I said, over the age of 25, the age match norms that just say because you're a human who lives on gravity, Earth, you're going to have some changes like that occur, and sometimes that's where that popping and clicking. Typically in the presence of pain, that's usually a bad thing. Okay. So one, it does not hurt. There's no pain, and so that's good. Probably, yeah, and two. I am 25, and oh, then you're screwed. my knees have always made that sound. Yeah, it's definitely, I think we have to go back to the terminal conversation. Oh, gosh, okay. <laughs> Amputation, that's probably Amputation. a good move for you. Yeah. Can I just do like above and below the knee? Uh, I'm not a I... big fan of a baloney, um, but. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, running, you mentioned earlier how it can actually be beneficial for jumping. Yeah. And, and ultimately dunking. So, there's fiber types of muscles. There are type 1 fibers, there's type 2, and there's type 2B. So, 1, 2A, 2B. Uh, what we see is type 1 fibers are called slow twitch fibers, not very fatigable, which means they can go for a long period of time before mm -hmm. they fatigue out, uh, but they're considered slow twitch fibers. Okay. It's not something you would use in jumping. What you're looking for more are those type 2 fibers. Type 2A is kind of a hybrid between type 1 and type 2B, mm -hmm. and type 2B is the fastest twitch fiber. It's also the most fatigable, it runs out of energy the quickest, okay. but it is the quickest response. It's a quick twitch fiber. Mm -hmm. So your question towards running, um, if we're talking about endurance running, you're probably right. Marathon training, even half marathon, maybe even get as low as into the 5K, are probably training a little bit more related to those slow twitch to those hybrid fibers. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about running being effective for jumping, we're probably discussing more along the lines of sprint work. So speed work, tempo, striders, stuff like that, that is going to really utilize those quick twitch fibers okay. are going to be very effective to training um, someone who's trying to jump as well. Okay. So it would be more sprint work, more uh, more speed and track work more than anything. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, actually, I should ask these questions now. Um, they just like, they make me ask these questions. Oh, the sponsors? Well, here, I'll just get, I'll ask you the first one. How do you think I am doing at this interview so far? Your pen is not clicked out. You're not writing anything. I'm not. I, well, I'll oh, just reading, reading. I'll certainly <laughs> one to ten. How do you think I'm doing so far? Oh man, is ten good or bad? Ten's good. Oh, definitely a ten then. Really? Yeah. Oh, wait, ten's good or bad? Ten's good. Oh, sorry, zero. Zero. Oh, it doesn't go to zero though. What's the lowest score I'm allowed to give? Uh, nine. Nine or ten. You're solid nine then. Nine. I'll take a nine. Thank yeah. you. And then this third question, I'll, I'll ask you at the end. It just makes more sense. But anyways, so my next question is about recovery. Okay. Basically, right now I'm just like I'm foam rolling. Yeah. Like five minutes a day. Mm -hmm. But any suggestions on recovery, 
and maybe even like cross training. Would that help in, with recovery? Would that help with injury prevention? Sure. Recovery wise, you're already on the right track. I think foam rolling is going to be a great, um, a great tool to use. Uh, things that live in like similar categories that also can be helpful would be like using the cross ball maybe to get muscles that are a little bit harder to get to. Uh, you also be able to bring out like that stick roller, um, and that's easier to get into like maybe the calves, which are a little bit harder to foam roll. Uh, contrast therapy is always going to be a good move as well, and that's the utilization of like alternating between heat and cold. Uh, so if you were someone who'd want to get into an ice bath, that'd be a good move for you or a yeah. sauna. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, want, I want that. Yeah. And that's probably more of a recovery tool than anything. The one of the more common questions I get from people is related to stretching. I'd actually tell you specifically for what we're shooting for, you're probably not needing to do much stretching at all. Okay. Um, stretching is going to, just by mechanism of what it does, it's going to increase tissue length. By increasing tissue length, you're going to decrease tissue tension. One of the you know best responses to us being able to generate jump is actually the elastic recoil that occurs from the tendons by, I'm not saying be like a, a tight ball of muscle, but by having some amount of tissue tension actually allows an individual to use that stretch reflex to jump higher. So okay. I would probably, for what your specific goals are, I'd actually be staying away from stretching, which might be a little counterintuitive. Question on that, I do some lifts. Yeah. Where my goal, I guess, is to get strength in a lengthened position. Yes. That is good. Okay. By definition, you need at least 17 seconds, like clinical research shows us, you need, you need 17 seconds of a sustained static hold to see what's called permanent deformation of a tissue or permanent change. Okay. So for you to strength train within a lengthened range of motion, assuming you're not sitting at the bottom of that movement pattern for 17 seconds or right. more, then you're not actually getting true tissue lengthening. You are getting exactly what you're shooting for, which is strength in a lengthened position, which that is actually 100% what you want to work for. Okay, I do a lot of split squats. Yep. That hip flexor is getting yeah. a crazy stretch yeah. is what it feels like. Yeah. And you're holding up your body with yeah. it, you know, so. Yeah, you won't be getting like tissue change in length, but you will be getting strength in a, you'll be getting yeah. hypertrophy strength in that lengthened position. So absolutely what, what you want to be doing. Okay, cool. Yeah, you nailed that. Okay. If I had to go back and answer that question about how good you're doing right now, I think I gave you a nine. I might bump you up to a nine and a half. Really? Yeah. You might or you... No, I totally would. 100%. Sweet. And you did ask about cross training. Oh, I did. Yeah. Yeah. In the realm of cross training, just knowing what you do outside of, I guess, like the fact that you do run, the fact that you are doing a bunch of different movement patterns kind of specific to um, increasing your jump height. And I, I don't think there's a lot of other movement patterns that you, or other, we'll say exercises that you want to bring in, that would be overly effective. Um, so like when I, when people reference cross training more commonly, they're referencing like cycling, which for you, I, I don't think really helps advance what you're shooting for. Um, plus I can't ride a bike. It always just goes pretty, backwards. Are, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Then it, for you, probably even more reason to not ride a bike. Okay. Just for like safety. Okay. And of you and everyone else involved. Yeah, that's best. I think in the realm of what I know you already do, I think cross training wise, you don't have anything else to do and you should absolutely stay away from riding a bike. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And that brings me to my last question. Where do you see my next breakthrough coming from? Like, is it isometrics? Is it, I don't know any other <laughs> ideas. So I'll give you, you one option. Is it this one? Yeah. Can you tell me? Anything? Probably not isometric work, That's but I think great. you're I, on the right track. That was an example. Yes. So. <laughs> um, I think the next big move for you is probably related to eccentric work, which is actually where you start from a shortened position okay. and you move into a lengthened position. And typically you want to do that at a, a very slow rate, five seconds to get through full range of motion. Uh, we really like eccentrics for a lot of things. One, we see the greatest amount of hypertrophy occur within the tissue. Hypertrophy means Get it's big. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's breakdown of tissue. With breakdown of tissue comes rebuild. Yeah. So getting big um, in layman's terms. But what we also see is an increased amount of uh, tendon strengthening as well. Okay. Um, we kind of reference the importance of the tendon creating an elastic response, kind mm -hmm. of like that rubber band response. I think the best example you can use, if you think of the most iconic, iconic jumper out there, who is it? Or what is it? What's the most iconic jumper out there? Kangaroo. Oh, kangaroo. Yeah, right. If there's something that's known for jumping, it's the kangaroo. Yeah. And really what allows the kangaroo to jump okay. is it has an, a massive amount of an Achilles tendon, 
which is the tendinous portion, a high elasticity. This guy. Yes, right on. Ping. Uh, <laughs> uh, and what we see is that, yes, it generates force from the muscle to stretch the tendon, but it's the recoil of the tendon that actually allows and propels a kangaroo forward. So in the same concept, well, obviously we'll never have that type of um, mechanical advantage, but we can load the tendon, increase the density of the tendon, make the tendon stronger, and thus create an even stronger elastic effect and increase our jump without increasing our height. That would just be something that would be increasing the tension of the, or the strength and tensile force of the tendon. Mm, okay, okay. So eccentric work. Gotcha. Did you actually know there is a way to increase your height? No. If you eat an egg a day, it's proven that you will grow taller. Scientific. Yeah, science. It's. Or did someone did someone tell you this? Yeah, yeah. Someone told me this, and that I've been doing that. Eating an egg every day. Yeah. Wow. And how's it working? I'm not getting shorter. Okay, well that's all my questions. Um, actually, I do have one more. Like I said earlier, um, I just felt like it probably be best to do it after. <laughs> um, it's just gonna it's just gonna ask you if you want to. It's just gonna ask you a question real quick. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I have a custom tip. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you wanna But I need to circle it? Well if you if you could write it or yeah. something. Alright. Okay, thank you. Okay, well that's a little awkward. <laughs> um I'll show you what it says. Um it's just that's awkward because as a gift for doing this interview with me, I I brought you something. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I did bring you some eggs. That is actually, that's actually perfect. Yeah. Um, but there, some of them are eaten. Some of them are eaten. Uh, as you know, my kitchen is... Is this your order? That's like a weird... <laughs> that's kind of like... That's um, actually hilarious. So as you know, my kitchen exploded. Yeah. It is under construction at the moment. Now the sell-by date is actually today. <laughs> I have to eat like 11 eggs. 11 eggs today. Yeah. Yeah, once this dunking thing, if it doesn't work out. Uh, or I'm sorry, when it, after it works out and you su succeed. Maybe start like an egg YouTube channel. I think it, I already I have. have. Dr. Mike. Wow. Thanks. Thank you. If you could. Oh, just my bad. Camera. Wrong camera. And then this one. Okay. And then that this one. one. And then just that one. Oh. Okay, that was a lot of info. So here's a quick summary of what I learned. The glutes, hamstrings, quads, and calves are the main muscles involved in dunking. So deadlifts, hip thrusters, front squats, calf raises are all good exercises to include. Two, even though my knees are very loud, I'm okay. Nothing to be worried about at the moment because there's no pain with the terrible noises. Three, sprinting can be beneficial in training to dunk because the sprint movement is pushing off of one leg with a lot of force, much like dunking. Four, continue foam rolling and maybe try contrast therapy. That's where you alternate from hot and cold, like getting in a cold tub and then going in the sauna and then going back to the cold tub and back. So, I'm looking forward to trying that one. Oh, eccentric movements, that's the fifth one. That's starting from a shortened position and then slowly getting to that lengthened position. One, lengthen. Two, elongate. And six, Dr. Mike does not like baloney. I hope you enjoyed that informative video. Next video, I'll share some progress because I am getting closer to dunking a regulation size basketball. Thank you for watching, and if you don't mind hitting that like button, that would be nice. That helps these videos get shown to more people. And let's be honest, more people need to know to eat an egg a day. So, goodbye.